I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. What a glorious feeling, I'm happy again. I'm smiling and I'm dancing and I'm singing him. Hi guys, I'm back again. Basically I asked a couple of weeks ago um, for anybody that is wondering anything about myself because I don't actually put that much of myself out there. If you had any questions about my life, who I am, what I do, then go ahead and ask away and I will do a video about that and answer all of your questions. It's been delayed a little bit because there's been other projects in the, on the go. This is a question and answer video for you guys. Um, the top that I'm wearing is by Miss Fab by Fatty George. It is ex exquisite design. She is based in Stockholm but she sells worldwide. Um, I will show you a snippet of some of her dresses. Oh my god, they are to die for. Not that I ever go out to evening, evening occasions or things like that, but if I did, these are dresses that I would wear. So I've got the red one that I will be showing you myself, um, but I'm just waiting for that occasion where I can rock it. But we'll be showing you what the dresses look like, how they flow. The accessories are all from Glitter Sweden. Um, we got to borrow some of their jewellery to do this video. And, uh, well, not these earrings. They are from a vintage shop in Sardamon. Um, it is called Smiley Vintage. They do lots of accessories and vintage clothing, one of a kind, custom made. So I'll post their link in the description bar below. Make sure you check the description bar because that's where I put all of the information um, that people ask generally. All right, enjoy the dresses and we'll be back to do a Q&A with Lovette. question we're going to take is my my Munaz on Instagram if you had to choose between a guy with smelly mouth rich and arrogant or body odor which one would you choose and why I wouldn't choose any of them because smells are very important to me if you don't know me personally I'm very obsessed with smells I'm very obsessed with it always smelling nice so in my house there's constantly candles burning always intense I couldn't date anybody with body odor or a smelly mouth it just it, I wouldn't pick any of them they can be as rich as King Midas and I would definitely not go there what is the most embarrassing incident that has happened to you oh I don't know I'm very very careful with embarrassments I don't um, put myself generally in situations where I get embarrassed um, but I remember last year I went to the UK and I was as I was coming back I purchased some uh, wig heads that I was going to bring with me so that I can showcase some of my wigs when clients come to visit etc and I put it in a, in a hand luggage and as the luggage was going through the security check you could tell their faces all changed and they all started whispering to each other and they were like <gasps> kind of like I got a head in my bag or something um, anyway I was stopped, I was searched, there was a queue of about 50 people and I was stopped and I was taken aside, they took my bag and they had to open it. Then they started laughing once they realised that it was a doll's head but it was nonetheless quite embarrassing. This question is from my friend Wendy in Australia, or was it New Zealand? One of them. Wendy, hi! Um, she asked, <laughs> why are you so damn gorgeous? No seriously. 
Are there any new wig collections in the pipeline? Um, I'm constantly improving my brand. I'm constantly thinking up new ideas of what to do. I think we're quite set in our ways in terms of making glamorous wigs for people. Um, but I don't know, it will have to be a surprise, babes. It will have to be a surprise. Um, how do you make the hairline look so natural? Um, for most of my units, I think I make the hairline as natural as I can because I go after my face shape. I think if you've got a brown face, you have to be careful how far back you pull your wig because it can end up looking a complete disaster. If you've got an oval face, again, you have to think about your face shape when you're doing your hairline because it has to look as natural as possible. What I hate is when you see people with their wigs starting all the way up here or they've like tweezed it so much and put so much concealer that you can spot it from an airplane above. That's not cute. Scarf, I think I make, try to make it as natural as possible because I look at my face shape and I work with it. Miss Francisca on, on Instagram. How do you see yourself in four years? And I think I've gotten this question in two variations. How do you see yourself in four years and ten years? And my, question, my answer is, I see myself wherever the universe and God or whoever sees me being. I, I, for me, time is irrelevant, but wherever I am, I am hoping I will be very happy. I'll be very content with whatever I have been blessed with. That is the most important. Where I am in four years, ten years, as long as I'm happy and I've got my loved ones around me, then I'm good. And Mr. Fox 3D on Instagram said, Hey beautiful, I've known you for a while now and the question I want to ask is, what was the most defining moment of your life and where do you draw strength from? I'll start with the last question. Where do I draw strength from? I think I draw strength from the fact that I know I can take myself out of any situation. Um, no matter how difficult it is, things always will get better. Another thing that I draw strength from has been my mother. She, anybody who, who follows me on Instagram or on Facebook will know, know that she is. She helps me out a lot in terms of answering your emails, answering questions, shipping out orders, things like that. So I draw strength from my mother. There is no situation that is bad enough that I can't talk to my mum about it. It can be relationships, it can be work, it can be um, friendship, anything. I can talk to her, so I feel very blessed to be able to have that relationship. I always feel safe, no matter how panicked I am, I can just pick up the phone and be like, oh my god, this is happening, what am I going to do, oh, and she will just be like, calm yourself, take a deep breath, let's talk about this, and she'll always make me see a different perspective to what I was panicking about. Defining moment of your life. I think one of my most defining moments of my life, there's been many, 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 must be in 2013, it was the summertime, and I just reached a breaking point in my life where I was like, I'm surrounded by really negative influences disguising themselves as good friends and partners and things like that. And a breaking point is when you have a disaster happen and there's nobody there that you can turn to who you've been there and giving them strength in turn. All of a sudden you realize that you're surrounded by fakes and just mm, not so great people. And that was a defining moment in my life because I had to choose whether I was going to sink or whether I was going to get up. I was going to brush myself off and I'm, I was going to take my life into a different direction. So I don't need to go into details as to what happened, etc. But that was a defining moment of my life. Now, Sandy Kawikwa, she is a long-standing loyal client to myself and she has bombarded me with questions. So the next questions are all from her and I'm gonna cover every single one of them the best way I know how. Where do you get your inspiration from? I can't explain where I get my inspiration from because I wake up some mornings, I go to bed some evenings and the inspiration just hits me to create something different. So inspiration is something that's indescribable because it's coming from somewhere that I could not tell you. Some people call it the universe, some people call it God, some people call it Allah. I don't know, it just comes from a, a divine nature, something, and I couldn't explain that. If you could be the opposite sex for a day, what would that day look like? Now, I have always said this since I was like 20 years old. If I was the opposite sex for a day, trust and believe, the only thing I would do is stare at it and be like, what the hell? Eh? I would pee everywhere. I pee in bushes, I pee in toilets, I pee standing up, I pee sitting down. I don't know, because I'm fascinated by just, it's just something that's there. I think I would like to go on a date as well, just to see if, if their perspective is different or when it comes to relationships, are men and women really that different or are we actually quite alike? 
Yeah, so that's what I do. I pee on a lot of stuff and I go on dates. Um, what do you think of when creating a unit for a client? Now this is very particular because my clients come to me for many different reasons. Some of them are going through chemotherapy and have lost all their hair through no fault of their own. Some of them are looking to be fabulous um, for a night or for an evening or for a specific event. Some of them just are growing out their natural hair and have done the big chop and just want to have something on their head whilst their natural beautiful afro is growing in. Now whatever drives you to come to me as a client I have to look at it as you are in focus. You are the person who's going to tell me what your vision is. When I create a unit for a client, what I think about is how I would like to be received if I was the one buying that unit. What is your dating status? And this is something that Jasmine's World on Instagram also asked me. So you guys are very, very curious about my dating life. Well, I can reveal to the whole world right now, I am seeing someone. They're the most amazing being in this creation that I can ever wish for. I'm very happy. I go to bed thinking about them. I wake up thinking about them. You guys might know who it is, actually. It's my company, Impressive Wigs by Lebec. That is my partner. That is my dating status. My life is so compartmentalized right now. I don't have time to date. I don't have time to see people other than my loved ones and my family. And... Uh, my family are my loved ones as well, but that is what I, that, that's who I'm dating. I don't have time to be dating somebody who's go, gonna demand more time from me than I can actually give them. And I'm at peace with that. I'm really happy. Thank you. What is your favorite type of hair and why? My favorite type of hair is my afro. I have to say, if I had it my way, I would wear my afro out all the time. It's not obviously possible due to my time constraints, but my favorite type of hair is your natural afro in its coily glory. Now, second to that, if I'm going to make a wig or do a weave or whatever, my second favorite type of hair must be the Peruvian type. Now, that doesn't mean the hair comes from Peru, okay? But it's a Peruvian type. It's thick strands, it matches my hair, it, straighten, it straightens well, and it curls even better. And yeah, that's my favorite, and that's what I'm wearing here as well. <laughs> Would you ever open an exclusive store in the future? Probably. As I said, it depends on what the universe has in plan for me. I have many wishes and I have many desires and I have many ideas on where my brand is going and which direction we'll be taking. But again, you can make plans all day, every day. It's what the universe thinks you deserve and what you're working hard for. How do you keep your skin looking flawless? Yes, I've seen you out of makeup and it's still good. Um, I am very careful with my skin, like it is my most prized possession. I don't go to bed with makeup. If I'm not going outside or going somewhere significant, I don't wear makeup. I tend to, if I ever wear makeup, to use coconut oil to remove my makeup to ensure that it's completely off my face. I use the Clarisonic Mia 2 to wash my face as well. All of that is really important because you can wear makeup all day, every day, but if your skin isn't taken care of, then there's no point. And I drink up to two liters of water a day. Do you love to travel? I would love to travel to Bali and I would love to travel to Cuba again. What's your favorite makeup product? I covered this earlier, but mascara. I love mascara. It makes my eyes pop. <laughs> One of my favorite girls at Instagram, we've actually never ever met, but she is so supportive and we have so many jokes, despite the fact that she's in the US and I'm in Sweden. Her name is Jazz Meets World. You've probably seen her commenting under my pictures, and if you're her friend, you've probably seen me commenting under her pictures. Um, she asked me, if you, had to, if you had a chance to meet two people from Instagram that you, you talk to, who would they be? I think you, obviously, Jazz. I absolutely adore you, and I've never even met you. You just seem like you have a very cool demeanor. You take things on a stride, but you have your boundaries. You seem to know how to have, have a good time, and I hope in the near future we can actually meet and go out for drinks and have a blast. I'm following you on Instagram. I, I want to meet you. Let's hook up. Aisha Savage on Instagram, she says, Is the glass half full or half empty? Darling, the glass is always half full. Because trust me, even if it was empty, you'd still be left with a glass. So you need, I have a positive outlook on my life. So no matter how bad it gets, I'm like, I'm still breathing, I'm still here, and if I'm blessed, I'll be here tomorrow. So the glass is always half full. Do you plan your outfits beforehand, or do you decide 
what to wear then and then. We plan outfits beforehand, but it's a waste of time because I go with what I feel like in the morning. Aisha also asked, do you have any pet peeves? I have many pet peeves. I'll give you just one though. Uh, fine, I'll give you two. But my main pet peeve is when people spit, like you're just standing there talking to them, all of a sudden they're like I'm like, do you not see me? But the look I give people, tells them do not do this again also people who smell <laughs> i don't like body odor i don't think there's any reason for it unless you're at the gym do you have a bucket list if yes three random things off my list i would like to someday open a what's it called a orphanage in gambia where kids without mums and dads can still have people there and still be taken care of and still have education and I'll be mum of a vet, you know? And I love them and I bring them crayons and I bring them, give them so much love and hugs and just, oh, I would love to have an orphanage somewhere and sponsor young girls and boys who want to go to school so that they can actually afford to go. I would love to have a school as well. I would love, love, love to have a, open a school. In conjunction with my orphanage because I think education is extremely pivotal in anybody's life because knowledge should be available to everybody so uh, yeah that's one of my bucket lists go to Bali open an orphanage and open a school somewhere in Gambia or maybe as many as I can afford to who's a famous youtuber that you admire and why I definitely admire Jenny Jenkins um, also known to you guys by as beauty by JJ Patricia bright it's my Ray Ray they are just Oh, and Shamelessly Maya. Shamelessly Maya must be definitely top of my list because she's just awesome. She imparts so much knowledge onto people and she's just so awesome. I'm like fangirling right here. 